In this video, we explain every VAR review from the FIFA 2022 World Cup in Qatar, including some of the most controversial ones shown in these opening clips. The reviews are explained in order of when they happened, from the first game to the last. When you've finished watching, let us know your thoughts and questions in the comments below. First up is a goal disallowed for Ecuador against Qatar. Clearly nobody is offside from the free kick, but when Ecuador's number two challenges the goalkeeper and touches the ball last, number 11 is offside at this point. Here is number two winning the header, and this is number 11 who's in an offside position. You can see the leg of number 11 is ahead of everyone except one defender, because the goalkeeper is also ahead of 11. Yes, including his butt. After number two wins the header, because 11 is in an offside position, once he then headers the ball himself, even though he's onside at this point, he's come back from an offside position and so offside is given. It may seem a bit confusing and it took VAR longer than necessary to confirm this decision, but ultimately they made the correct call. Next is Iran's penalty against England, which was initially denied by the referee, but after a VAR review, the penalty was awarded. England defender Stones clearly pulls poor Aliganji's jersey, and even though it's a soft penalty, the call was correct based on the laws of the game and guidance for holding inside the penalty area. Now we've got Argentina's goal against Saudi Arabia, which was disallowed for offside after a VAR review. Here's a reference to the laws of the game showing which areas of the arm or shoulder are considered offside. And this is a graphic showing the green area which you can potentially score a goal with. So that's considered for offside decisions. If we zoom in, these are the two areas in consideration for this offside. The Saudi defender's boot and Martinez's shoulder. If we zoom in further, the red line is the upper boundary as referenced in the previous graphic. And so the small yellow triangle area is basically the part of Martinez's body that is considered offside in this situation. Although it's a tight call, VAR got the decision correct based on the current laws and offside guidance. From the same game, Paredes is fouled by a Saudi defender from a corner and VAR suggests a review for the referee. It's clear that the Saudi defender holds Paredes and he's not even looking at the ball. However, it's still a soft decision with the VAR mantra being minimal interference for maximum benefit. Ultimately, the referee can argue that he made the right call, but we'll put a question mark on this decision. Now we have Denmark calling for a penalty against Tunisia, which VAR suggested the referee review. The handball question could have gone either way, but it didn't even get to that point as the penalty review was rejected by the referee because of a foul in the build-up. See the push in the back here by Denmark's Jensen on Kanisi. This was the correct decision by the referee. Poland versus Mexico, as Lewandowski is fouled by Moreno and a penalty is awarded after a VAR review. Moreno is clearly holding Lewandowski's jersey and his leg also comes across him, so it's a clear foul based on the laws of the game, as you'll see here. The referee determined that Moreno was attempting to play the ball and so he was only given a yellow card, instead of a potential red had he just been punished for the holding offence. VAR and the referee got this decision correct. Germany versus Japan, and Havertz scores to make it 2-0, but VAR overturns the goal for offside. Havertz is clearly ahead of the last defender, but he would still have been onside had he been behind the ball. Unfortunately for him, he was leaning just ahead of the ball, and so the goal was correctly disallowed by VAR, and this decision was communicated to the referee on the field. On to Canada versus Belgium, with Buchanan's shot being blocked by Carrasco's hand, and after a VAR review, the referee awarded a penalty. This was a simple decision as Carrasco's arm was away from his body in an unnatural position. Correct decision by the referee. Buchanan was also involved in the next incident where he was possibly fouled by Vertonghen, but the AR incorrectly signalled for offside. You can see here that Azard clearly passes the ball to Buchanan, so the offside call is completely wrong, as you see here in the laws of the game. VAR then had to look at the potential foul by Vertonghen, but they determined that it didn't need a review by the referee. We can only assume this is because of the slight touch on the ball that Vertonghen got before he made contact with Buchanan. This is a 50-50 decision that could have gone either way, so we will put this as another question mark in terms of the call that the referee and VAR made. The final incident from this same game was Witzel's potential foul on Larea. The referee didn't give a penalty on the field and VAR would have checked it, but didn't recommend a review as they didn't deem it a clear and obvious error. Bitzel definitely makes contact with Larea and doesn't get a touch on the ball, so this is another 50-50 decision that could have gone either way. Another question mark on this call. Now on to Portugal versus Ghana, where Salasu appeared to foul Ronaldo and a penalty was awarded. VAR reviewed the incident and again didn't deem that the referee had made a clear and obvious error, so the penalty call was allowed to stand. 
Ronaldo just gets to the ball first and Salasu makes contact with his boot and his body. But the contact is minimal and you could argue Ronaldo was already going down. This is another decision that could easily have been given either way. And so it's another question mark on the final call. Wales versus Iran and Welsh goalkeeper Hennessy dangerously crashes into Taremi. The ref awarded a yellow card, but after a VAR review, this was upgraded to a red card for Dogso, which is denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. There was a Welsh defender nearby, so the Dogso call is slightly questionable, but it could easily have been a red for endangering the safety of an opponent. So we have to conclude that the officials made the correct decision in this situation. From the same game, Iran scored but the goal was ruled out by VAR for offside. This was a straightforward decision as the Iran player is clearly ahead of the ball when it is played, making him offside. Correct decision by the officials. Senegal versus Qatar and a thief is arguably fouled from behind by Saar. The referee didn't award a penalty and VAR only did a brief check instead of a full review and they decided the ref hadn't made a clear and obvious error. You could argue that a thief intentionally places his body in front of Saar to draw the foul. But there is also an argument that Saar was careless by running into the back of him. This could have gone either way and been justified, so we'll put a question mark on this decision. Netherlands versus Ecuador, and Estupinian deflects the ball into the net for Ecuador, but the goal is ruled out by VAR for offside against Peroso. From the first shot, Peroso is impacting the Dutch keeper's line of vision, but from the deflection, the keeper is already diving, and he can clearly see the ball, so Peroso arguably doesn't impact him at this point. That said, the offside law doesn't require the keeper be able to save the ball if a player is offside. He only has to be impacted, but that is up for debate in this situation. This was a very harsh decision in the circumstances, and we'll have to conclude that the officials got this one wrong. Poland versus Saudi Arabia, and Saudi's Al Sheri goes down in the penalty area after a challenge from Bielik. The referee initially denied the penalty, but overturned his call after a VAR review. This was a mistake, as VAR should not have intervened, given that this was not a clear and obvious error by the referee. There is some contact, but it's minimal, and so we have to put this down as an incorrect decision by the officials. Morocco versus Belgium, and Ziyech scores directly from a free kick. However, VAR requests a monitor check for offside. Saïs was offside when the free kick came in. That was confirmed by VAR's semi-automated technology. But the question was whether he interfered with the goalkeeper's vision. Because Saïs made an obvious attempt to try and head the ball, the officials correctly determined that he had impacted the goalkeeper and ruled the goal out for offside. Germany versus Spain, and Rudiger, shown here, thought he'd given Germany the lead with a header. However, VAR intervened and almost immediately confirmed he was offside, taking just 28 seconds to overturn the call. Clearly this was the correct decision. Cameroon versus Serbia and the big man Abubakar scored with a sublime scoop over the keeper, but the AR flagged for offside. VAR reviewed the incident, and it was clear that Abubakar was onside, as you can see here. The call was overturned, and the goal was correctly awarded. Ghana versus South Korea, and Salasu scores for Ghana, but there is a VAR check for possible handball in the build-up. You can see that the ball clearly hits Ayu on the hand, but the handball law was amended in 2021 to state that accidental handball before a goal is scored is only punishable if it's the scorer who handles it. If Ayu's arm was away from his body in an unnatural position, the goal could have been disallowed, but in these circumstances, the goal was allowed to stand. Correct decision. Brazil versus Switzerland, and Vinicius scores but VAR intervene for a possible offside against Richarlison. It's clear that Richarlison is offside when the ball is played from the back. He then comes back from an offside position and touches the ball, and so he's offside at this point. This was an easy decision for VAR, and they got the call correct. Portugal versus Uruguay. The first one is the decision by VAR to have the referee review a potential penalty for Portugal, after the referee chose not to give it on the field. The IFAB updated their guidance last year, with examples of when a player should not be penalised for handball even if their arm is away from the body. And one of those specific examples covers when arm position is for support, when falling or when getting up from the ground. The Uruguay player is very clearly using his left arm for support as he falls. And this has to be covered by the exception. It is almost identical to the example the IFAB issued, as you'll see here in this image. VAR and the referee should not have awarded a penalty. Netherlands versus Qatar, and Gakpo appears to handle the ball in the build-up to a goal. VAR asked the referee to review the incident on the pit side monitor, and it is quickly overturned. Correct decision, as Gakpo's action was deliberate based on his arm moving toward the ball. 
Griezmann equalised for France in their game against Tunisia, but the goal was ruled out for offside. Let's take a look at the decision in more detail. Firstly, Griezmann is offside when the ball is played, that's clear. However, the question is whether the Tunisia defender deliberately played the ball, which would reset the offside phase and put Griezmann onside. Deliberate play is a subjective decision by VAR and the referee, and in this case they decided that the Tunisia player didn't deliberately play the ball because he was under pressure and was stretching to get to the ball. Therefore, he didn't have control over where it went. If the Tunisia player had jumped ahead of the ball without pressure from the French player, his header would likely have been considered a deliberate play, and the goal would have been allowed to stand. It's a controversial decision, but technically it's correct in accordance with the laws of the game. The other controversial part of this incident was that the referee actually allowed play to restart after the goal, only for a brief second, and then blew the full-time whistle. Once play has actually restarted, VAR protocol does not allow a review, and so there is an argument that the review should not have happened in the first place. It's a messy situation, but the laws of the game do not allow for a change to the result, even if a clear mistake has been made. Question mark on this decision. Argentina versus Poland, and Messi is caught by Chesney's hand, and VAR advises a review. Chesney certainly made contact with Messi's face, but the contact was minimal and didn't prevent him from heading the ball. This kind of incident with keepers happens often, and fouls are very rarely given. VAR should not have intervened in this situation given the circumstances, so we'll put this down as an incorrect decision. Croatia were awarded a penalty against Belgium, but the decision was ruled out for offside in the build-up. Let's take a closer look at what seems to be a controversial decision. Firstly, here is the guidance in the laws of the game on which parts of the body are considered for determining offside. And here is an IFAB graphic showing that you can score with the green part but not the red part of your arm. Now when we look at the VAR decision, it's clear that the margins are absolutely tiny, and that makes this one of the most controversial offside calls you are going to see at the World Cup. The yellow line shows where the Belgian player's cutoff point would be, and the red line shows the Croatian player's cutoff point at a different angle based on the position of his arm. The tiny green triangle appears to show the area of the Croatian player's arm or shoulder that is considered offside. It's an incredibly tight call using semi-automated technology, and ultimately, the referee overturned his decision after a pitch-side monitor review. Belgium fans will no doubt have left thinking they should have won the game, but Lukaku produced a masterclass on how not to score. Technically, this was the correct decision. Germany versus Costa Rica, and Fulkrug scores for Germany, but the AR raises his flag for offside against Sane. You can see here that Fulkrug is offside when the ball is played, but being in an offside position is not an offence. Sane is actually onside at this point. Once Sane then receives the ball and chests it across, because Fulkrug is behind the ball, he's onside, and so the goal was correctly awarded. Japan scored to take a 2-1 lead against Spain, and this goal ultimately knocked Germany out of the World Cup. It was another controversial VAR decision, so let's take a closer look. The ball appears to be out of play when it is crossed for Tanaka to score, but we'll look at the laws of the game and still images to see that it was actually in play. The ball has to be completely out of play, on the ground or in the air, and this includes the curvature of the ball. Here you can see the ball looks like it's out of play until we add a red line on the edge of the goal line, and then add a circle over the top of the ball. Yes, the 3D ball is a sphere, but this circle shows the outside edge of the curvature of the ball, which is the important part. And when we zoom in, we see that there is some overlap between the curvature and the goal line. To disallow the goal, VAR would need to show conclusively that the ball is completely out of play to overturn a clear and obvious error. Because they couldn't determine this from their images, the goal was allowed to stand. It's worth noting that ball tracking technology is not used to determine if the ball is in or out of play. It's only used to determine whether or not the ball has crossed the goal line for a goal to be scored. Again, this is a very tight call by VAR, and it's controversial because it essentially put Germany out of the World Cup. Ghana versus Uruguay, and Nunez is challenged by Amati. The referee said no foul, but VAR advised a monitor review. Perhaps surprisingly, the referee rejected the penalty after reviewing it from multiple angles on the monitor. He concluded that it wasn't clear whether Amati fouled Nunez, he may have got a touch on the ball, but it was very minor if he did, and so this was a controversial call. Question mark on this one. In the same game, Uruguay keeper Roche challenges Kudus, and VAR advisor review. There was an offside flag, but this was shown to be incorrect, so the question was simply about a potential foul on Kudus. After a review of multiple angles, the referee correctly awarded a penalty based on the contact from keeper Roche. 
France versus Poland, and the ball hits a Pamacano on the arm as he turns away. After a VAR review, the referee correctly awarded a penalty as a Pamacano's arm was in an unnatural position away from his body. Lewandowski missed the first penalty, but goalkeeper Lloris was off his line before the shot, and so a retake was correctly ordered. Portugal versus Morocco, and Fernandes goes down with Hakimi potentially clipping him from behind for a penalty. VAR reviewed the incident and determined the contact either didn't happen or was very minor, with Fernandes possibly embellishing the way he went down. Controversial call, but probably the right one unless it was very clear that Hakimi had fouled him in the replays. From the same game, Fernandez's cross hit Yamik on the arm, but no penalty was awarded. Difficult to get any images of this one. The VAR check was brief and they confirmed no penalty. It cannot be a handball offence if a player is making a defensive clearance and plays the ball onto their own arm or hand. So this was the correct decision. Two big decisions had an impact on England's game with France. Taking into account my potential bias based on my accent, let's try and take an objective look at both decisions. The first decision, or non-decision should I say, is VAR's miss or refusal to intervene for what was a clear foul by a Pamacano on Saka in the build-up to France's first goal. The defender gets nowhere near the ball and fouls the England forward from behind, but both the referee and AR missed it. The VAR guidance is clear. If there is a foul in the build-up to a goal being scored, VAR can review and disallow the goal. There is no question they made a mistake in this situation. The second controversial issue was a potential foul on Kane, again with the Pamacano involved. Kane was fouled from behind, but again the referee and AR ignored claims for a foul. VAR could have intervened if the foul was definitely inside the penalty area, and as you'll see from these images, while it looks like the contact potentially was inside the area, it's inconclusive, and so VAR had to determine that the referee did not make a clear and obvious error. Therefore, the foul wasn't given. This decision could have gone either way, but VAR made the correct call from their perspective, as they couldn't be sure the foul was inside the penalty area. Post your thoughts and questions in the comments below, and we can get some discussion and banter going, as many of you will no doubt have your own opinions on these decisions. Thanks for watching, I'm off to enjoy some fish and chips.